We've been talking about this for, I mean, 18 months, but frankly, it feels like five years. So why has, has it taken so long to actually get here? Yeah, well, so I guess, uh, you know, unlike most of what you spent the day talking about, real estate is it's not traded on a screen. Yeah. It's inherently illiquid. It takes months, even years to sell it. Um, so a quick recap, what's happened? Obviously, we had Russia's invasion of Ukraine, interest rate hike, inevitably risk-free rates gone up. Yeah. So returns required from property accordingly go up. Uh, and what that means is sellers are clinging to their backward-looking valuations, which are based on, you know, previous transactions. Buyers want to pay a new price that reflects where the risk-free rate is. So a huge, big bid-ask spread opens up, no deals. Valuations are based on transactional evidence, so they're very, very slow to adjust. This has been dragging out now, as you say, for like the last 18 months. But gradually, as time goes on, loans mature, people have to refinance, funds hit the end of their life, they have to sell assets, and you get that drip, drip, drip of transactions. And what we're starting to see is those transactions are at materially lower prices than where they were before, understandably. And eventually, banks have to acknowledge what that means is there's going to be some impairment yeah. of, in their real estate loan books. So that's where we are now. Banks are starting to provision yeah. for expected losses. But Jack, so, so how big are these provisions? Like, it, it, again, do we understand, do we fully have an understanding of the exposure of who to what? Or could it, could it turn ugly quite quickly? Uh, so, no, we don't have a perfect picture. I think, um, as ever with real estate, it's, it's worth bearing in mind it's an inherently local asset class. Mm -hmm. And the, the sort of worst part of, of the market globally right now is the US office market. Also, the US has the most transparent debt market. Yeah. So we have a reasonable sense of who's exposed to mm. US office in particular. I guess what's been interesting recently is that's not just US lenders, that's European lenders, Japanese lenders. So there is, there's risk of spread there. What we don't have yet is a real sense of how significant the hit to lenders could be in Europe. We've right. had individual isolated events. Cigna, the big Austrian luxury group, has, has collapsed. You know, Julius Baer has written off its entire exposure there, uh, but, but there could be more to come. So, Jack, is this mainly basically because of the link to U.S. commercial real estate, or is this commercial real estate in Europe that then needs to be provisioned? So, I think there's two, there's two separate things. I think a lot of the headlines we've seen in the, in the last couple of weeks have been around exposure to U.S. commercial yep. real estate. Um, and I think, as I said, we have to bear in mind that the operating environment in the U.S. and Europe are very different. Vacancy yep. rates in the U.S. office market are very high. In Europe, they're rising a bit, but from a much, much lower base, so not the same concerns. But we do know that, you know, bond yields, gilt yields have moved out substantially over the last couple of years, and real estate prices have not yet corrected to the extent that reflects that. Now, will they fully move in lockstep? We'll see. But if they do, inevitably, there is going to be more distress for European lenders.